back in this bitch, uh Know we full attack in this shit, uh You know the full Mac came equipped uh. Yo, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the 8 Morning 92 Podcast, where we always keep it 100, 100. I am your host, Harrison. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Let me put these on, make sure I'm sounding right. Yes, 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 yes. All right, good, 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 good. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. I am glad to be here. I hope everybody has been good. This is like my third take for today, but I am doing good today. I hope everybody's week has been good. It is Friday night and I'm here all night. I probably might be breathing heavy for a second. Like I said, I had to run upstairs and I have to do all this. As y'all can see, I was just dancing before we started, but I am here today. Yes, uh, this is a late, 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 late week for your boy. Hey, man, still had to be done. So, but like I said, y'all, we work on consistency. We work on making sure we hit our deadlines. And like I said, I, I do this shit. So I want to make sure I get it done. Uh, was not about to do this shit without no um, haircut. Well, I was getting kind of tired of wearing a hat. So I just wanted to make sure that I presented myself the best way here, especially since we're doing the YouTube and shit. Sometimes you just kind of get tired of just wearing a hat and shit. Just wanted to make sure. And also, I get my hair cut like every two weeks. So, um, only thing kind of was holding it back was um, any, I was waiting for a frocking at work. Anybody knows the military, I'm just waiting for them to do the uh, promotion. And so, they were kind of holding it up. So, that was kind of like the only thing I was waiting for them to do. And it's kind of been stalling on that. So, I just have not got that yet. So, that's been like the thing i'm I'm trying to take my haircut lower than what it is but i mean you know still got the hairline for all the people that said it wasn't gonna make it past 26 we're in the 30 so i'm living my best life i ain't going back and forth with you niggas i'm got my inches on the top of the head and below but this ain't that type of conversation but i'm here to talk to y'all today shoot the shit do what we usually do i hope everybody is good i like to usually start these episodes out now that i've been doing these kind of like my decompression my therapy session what i kind of learned throughout the week um this week i wanted to discuss something i talked about with banks this week and we had kind of been talking about just kind of releasing burdens and letting go of people family whether it's family members or whether it's just things you've just been kind of doing to that doing in your life that had just been kind of holding you down and causing you stress and we had kind of both had just been going through our lives at points in our lives whether we just had family members that are burdens to us because we had gotten to a point to where we have made it to a point banks is has a wife now has a house and everything and you can't get to the point to where you are carrying people and that worrisome of that worriedness of if you don't step up and take care of somebody, will they make it? Because you have to worry about yourself. My burden has always been like um, one thing I've hated is I've always had to take the the job of being the bigger person in a situation to where when it came down to me getting into it with my um parent parental figure my parent my mom and everybody would just be like you know how my dad is you know how your father is you know how this is but i would have to be the one who had to be the bigger person at 13 at 17 and 18 and i used to think that was bullshit because 
why do I have to figure out a situation to compensate or do anything with a grown ass man? And I'm still trying to figure out how to be a man. And I used to always hate those type of examples. I used to, I'm sorry. I used to always have to hate those type of cop outs. In my opinion, I didn't think that made me a better person at the time because I felt like that was that made it as a scapegoat to always tell me to go figure it out and always let somebody get away with behavior shit that's something you tell a child and i feel like for somebody to always be older they never really address the problem so the burden of always having to figure out whatever is going on in my life i always had to figure out was it always me now the benefit of that was i learned to really self assess myself and through some type of self through self-assessment some of the things i had been dealing with recently is just a lot of self guilt i've been having i know i had talked about um on the last episode uh, about the picking up and you know feeling the guilt um i reached out to the people i picked up when i told them my thank yous i had felt some guilt about some lies i had told and the burden of just the guilt i had had when i was talking about new ways of motivation and you have to let that go um i had been carrying that on just from the burden of just the stress and like thinking that if i the burden of getting back at people and the burden of trying to figure out things through revenge and um the the revenge and consequential vengeance paid a toll and i was ashamed of how i handled the situation for some people if you paid attention i named them in the last episode but the way that i went about it it was a casualty that i went about it it was a casualty that i was ashamed that i went about it and that was in turn which made me think of the last episode of why i felt felt i needed to go about new ways of finding motivation um i came to the realization that my ways of trying to always motivate myself just for the simple fact that i need to get back at you and you need to feel the vengeance is not worth the blowback of the lives that you leave in the wake of damage you know that burden of going through of uh, leaving bodies in the wake of people you care about and is it worth it at the end of the day the stress i think i went two or three months of not talking about talking to people that i care about because i lied to them and i thought about it every day just because i was so focused on what i could get back at somebody else for because i had lied to some people because i didn't want them to think of me as losers because I was so focused on a hold that somebody else had, but I had to upstage them. And, you know, to cut ties, to fall back to what, you know, it falls back into the banks, whether what he was talking about, you know, with his situation, whether it worked out for that person that he was dealing with, it's going to either work out for them, for the good or for the bad. It, he won't know. He has to go on and accept the decisions that comes with whatever decision he makes and he has to come to a point to where he accepts his decision with me i should have cut ties the moment i left the gunston hall and lived with the fact of wherever i was going and wherever i was in my life and accepted the people who accepted me and for that i should not have taken the burden of what left me um and i did not realize how much of a hold it had on me um for that i regret for that burden it took for me the burden that i you know like the hold it had and it's not worth it it's not it's like um it's been a lot of like searching in what do i want to be who do i want to be like how how much do i want to sit there and be upset how mad do i want to be at people how much control do i want to be how many more fights do i want to get in you know what i'm saying how many more asses can i kick before i just 
before I do it. Actually, I'll take that back. Am I going to get the reaction I want when I do it? And the fact of the matter is I got something that I worked for, but because it's stain, I haven't been able to enjoy it because of everything that's come from it. And the fact that I couldn't, I can't enjoy it even now to this day is a clear indicator that because I never shifted my focus on what the goal should have been, is why I need to change my goals going forward because this is something I should have celebrated. And because of what I did, because of the bodies that I left in the trail, I can't rightfully celebrate it because like Thanos said to Gamora, what did it cost you? And it cost me everything, but it cost me a lot. No, uh, shout out J. Cole, no free shout outs, but it cost me a lot. And I don't know the damage or ramification. You know, some of those people aren't here, but I talked to, you know, some of the people and um, they were hurt. And I don't know what it would be like when they get here, but it cost me a lot. And was it worth it at the end of the day? Was their perception of me? You know, um, I was so worried about people thinking or being proud and not looking at me as a clown because that's what I feel like when I left. Am I a clown now? You know, did I become what I was fearing not to be? And did I end up proving the people right in the long run, trying to prove them wrong? So, you know, you got to let those burdens go. So um, still learn to move on. I haven't learned it as good as I thought I have. I am still a work in progress. I don't know if I need to learn the forgiveness part I because I don't think that's going to ever be me. <laughs> I just need to learn how to move on and call a spade a spade. Um, I, I'm really good at moving on once a game of basketball is over. And if I could put my situations of life in the spectrum of when a basketball game is over, like I can argue with a motherfucker or when a football, any type of sports game is over. When the game is over and you say good game and I lead a court or when I lead a field or wherever, the game is over. I don't take it with me. Like, why? I need to learn how to do that with certain situations. You know, I'm competitive and I can leave it out there and I can go. But when it comes to certain things that deal with my emotions and those things are tied to emotion, when it deals with like my mental like state, I need to learn how to let that go. And I think that's going to be like my next stage of learning how to separate the two and leave it out there, quote unquote, on the field. Don't bring your baggage home with me. My my homeboy Bear tells me um all the time. You tell me all the time on the ship to leave your problems at home. Well, you know I'm gonna learn how to separate that. And you know Devin will tell me the same thing. And so you know those are just kind of the things I'm going to uh, work on. And those are like my next hurdles and obstacles. So that's my little therapy session rant. Um moving right along um i did figure out if i could coach now we play kickball uh i don't know why kickball is not a professional sport i really don't like kickball i don't know if anybody has a great kickball story but i feel like if i was ever go professional at a sport i feel like i could be a kickball fucking champ like i don't know if anybody remembers watching the boondocks episode when riley i mean huey was like the the nigga at kickball but I feel like at five years old, I remember the first time I ever played kickball. It was at Tuscombe Elementary. And the kids were at, at least second graders or so when I was in the kindergarten. And they rolled me the ball, and they didn't take me serious at all. And we were playing on the blacktop, and we was aftercare. And I kicked that ball, and we were playing on the blacktop to where, like, the, the basketball courts and stuff were. I kicked that ball so far. And at that point, every time they see me, they let me play kickball with the adults. Like, you know how people say they have their basketball stories to where they will like whoop the kids in basketball with all the older kids. I was like that with kickball. If I could have played that, that's when I knew like I love sports. Like, if, like you know, when um when um what was her name? Um Sydney and Brown Sugar. When did she fall in love with hip hop? Okay, that's when I fell in love with sports. Like when I played kickball for the first time. And I just I just remember like that was like one of the first sports I love. So uh, we played kickball this weekend and a lot of this past weekend, a lot of like talk had been like made of like recently. Could I coach like my own like kids of playing sports because I've coached a lot and I'm really good coach. 
but it's easier well my temperament could i coach my own kids personal and um it's easier coaching other people's kids because you don't have any personal ties to them and so when you coach other people's kids you can show restraint i feel like that's easy because you don't have frustrations with them i guess that you have your own because you are used to them you're not used to them doing certain things or you you don't go home with them i guess i don't know but i just noticed that maybe okay or i guess maybe let me say this when it's not your kid and you just have them and you don't know what their potential is or however you get them you just coach what you know but if it's your kid you don't want to give them the same effort because you know if it's at least your kid you're going to think of them of how you are at least so we play kickball and isaiah and me are the complete opposite when it comes to sports or anything in general just because isaiah has like the will of nothing versus me i'm not gonna give up on anything and i think when he sees my competitive competitiveness he attributes it to just sports i'm not gonna lose at uno i'm not gonna lose at jacks i'm not gonna lose at tic-tac-toe i'm not gonna lose at anything and when he sees me winning or losing it's just my competitiveness he when he doesn't want to lose at he doesn't want to win at anything so we're playing kickball and when we're trying to play it's uh he's playing shortstop and we're playing kids against adults and i'm playing with all the kids and he's the oldest of the kids but it's me one adult but she's a woman and so it's me and the other adults on the other end is a bunch of guys so it's me her isaiah and i have like all the kids so i'm playing the whole outfield by myself and it's isaiah playing between shortstop and so as I'm talking to Isaiah, he's like kind of half paying attention. He doesn't really know the bases and anything. So I'm trying to tell him how to play. And when you talk to Isaiah, if he like senses that you're getting frustrated, he's not, he's kind of like loses focus and he kind of like gets annoyed. And when you're kind of talk to him and coach at the moment when the game is going on, you don't have time to kind of be like, hey, Sonny. I need you to do this. No, the game's going on. So I made you sound a little like, hey, hey, come on, like, let's go. So he kind of gets disinterested. And I'm like, yo, I can't talk to you like how you want me to talk to you because the play is about to happen. I need to kind of get you into action. And so I asked him after the game, like, yo, why didn't you kind of want to, why weren't you focused? He's like, oh, I have mosquitoes on me. I'm like, are you serious? But like kids his age or kids his generation don't go outside. Me, you couldn't get me to come inside. So it's I noticed then like my temperament for him, at least, because he doesn't do anything as far as any type of competitive, any activities. I don't think I could coach him because he has no like drive to like we were zip lining and he before the race even started, I found out later. He just said, you'll probably win. So I'm not going to try like he he just gives up before the race starts. So. I couldn't probably coach him, you know, another thing I could easily because I'm before he even learns like what losing is, I'm not even going to have that in his head. So I learned why I never knew why if I could or couldn't coach my own kids until this kickball game. But I learned why now I don't think I could coach my kids at the moment because I don't have the temperament to stop myself of if I see laziness from my son's because i know that that's not the expectation but i've noticed like even when i work out people i don't hold anybody's different to a standard than what i do I, um love what cmg is making right now um a lot of people talk a lot of shit about yo Gotti. i want to give him his flowers right now uh yo Gotti, say what you want to i like cm 10 uh cocaine music 10 and i also like what he's doing with cmg he stayed out of the noise. He stayed out of the mess. And he's made CMG a fucking powerhouse right now. Everybody is either number one or putting out number one type music. He has money back, killing on the charts. Black Youngster has been top since he's been in. He got 4-2 Doug. He got ESTG, Mozzie, Glorilla. Y'all just heard me playing her song before the episode started doing my dance with my Hoochies. Shout out Hoochie Fi Hoochie, my fraternity. I hope that's not like somebody fraternity because I'm just doing it for that. So uh, I just wanted to give Yo Gotti a shout out. Um, I just think that's like just 
all these years in the game, I, I don't think like Yo Gotti really gets like the credit he deserves for just being like a fucking mogul. Um, I think the only downside mogul I can really think of that's put out the consistency that he's put out with the catalog that he's had with the artists that he's had. And honestly, there's no real floppers on CMG if you can really think of it. And he pushes them out and he's not in their way. And you don't really see too many Gotti features, unlike a Maybach music or so. Actually, Maybach music might be the closest, but I don't really see too many Maybach artists that have the stay power like CMG. And Gotti not only puts out good work, he also, all his artists are shining without it. Sometimes I be forgetting all them artists are on CMG until I just paid attention to that last project they put out. But I mean, you know, like I said, it's, it's good for Tennessee. We don't have a lot of, you know, stay power. Like I said, you got Juicy J, 3-6, um, especially that shit that happened with Dolph last year and Paper Route. You know, there's not that many people on there that you could really run name off of that. And with Dolph gone, I don't know how that is going to hold up as far as the names of it go, but I still know the label will be in good hands with – um what's his name key glock but like i said i just want to shout out Gotti. i think what he's done he's he submitted himself and say what you want to the man is a icon so i just want to give cmg i want to give Gotti uh his flowers while he can while i can because i think from cocaine music one and for every year or decade whatever you want to put Gotti has hits on top of hits on top of hits so um say what you want to Gotti is a tennessee legend to me um lebron was in the drew league definitely like the moves uh i feel like when niggas don't understand say what you want to the niggas been playing for 20 years almost 40 years old nigga look like a fucking god in the drew league put up 40 points i don't lebron is putting up numbers against young niggas what motherfuckers want to go to ice cube three on three league and do which the three on three league big three is being is way better than people give it credit for because they also win younger and it's getting a lot more exposure so um yeah like i said lebron i just pe people just do not realize how much they're gonna miss this man when he goes um i watched it he looks very good can't wait for the season to go start up um don't really know it seemed like the whole hype about what's going on with westbrook has kind of died down um steph was at the sbs haven't seen any real trade news i think I don't think they're going to trade KD at this point just because they're asking for like a shitload. I heard Donovan Mitchell might be moving from what it seems like. I know Kyler Murray just got a bag and football is literally right around the corner. I think what we only got like a couple more Sundays before we are like football free. I'm sorry. There will be no more Sundays without football for like the next six, seven, eight months. So that is a good one. Um, I did see Vince McMahon just went ahead and retired. Found that pretty funny, seeing that he had like uh this whole scandal for him paying off uh sex shit for a long time. You know what's really funny? Vince McMahon has gotten away with a lot of shit for saying nigga on TV, the whole thing with the XFL people not standing. I really feel like Vince McMahon is racist and got away with a lot of shit because of WWE. He kind of have a lot of Trump qualities to him. I'm pretty sure there's a rape case there. Or he done did some sexual assaulting out there. But the fact that, I don't know, people ain't pressed the Vince McMahon, kind of funny to me. But um, he stepped down today and retired. All well. Um, 77 years old. He out the dough. So he he up was uh, toting on that upper room. And then I seen uh, the Marvel's about to have a Comic Con. I can't wait to see what they're about to release this weekend is gonna be a dope weekend i'm really surprised at how much criticism i've been seeing for like people are really like hating like this people are really just calling like this phase first off morbius is not a phase for marvel so stop throwing that sony but people are really just kind of like hating on this phase for marvel and i really think that it's because i honestly just think that because y'all don't know where the direction is going i feel like y'all just saying shit I have my criticisms of it as well, but I honestly think, honestly, people are saying things about it because they just do not know the direction of it. And I think because I think they said the next Avengers will be the Kang Wars and the Avengers 6 will be the Secret Wars. 
So I think now that maybe y'all have some direction where they're going, people will shut up. But I feel like why complain now? Like we're getting a bunch of Marvel stuff and they have so many access to characters. Like, I don't know. People just want to feel like people just want to complain about stuff. And I feel like with the more access of social media, people just are talking to talk. Thor was good. Doctor Strange was great. I just don't know what you could honestly do to please people. I, you know what I'm noticing? Endgame was good as fuck. And Infinity War was fucking amazing. And Spider-Man No Way Home was the shit. And niggas just act like you gonna do that every fucking time. I'm like, damn, bro. Let's not forget, like, there were poo-poo movies in between Infinity War, uh, Endgame, and no way home let's not act like all the iron man's was the shit let's not act like y'all loved captain america the first one let's not act like y'all love age of ultron so let's not act like every marvel movie was the shit's not it they had the strongest three and black panther we all love that one so let's not act like every marvel movie was just giving y'all wet dreams so it's just endgame was just fucking the shit so Let's relax, people. Damn. I mean, every two seconds, I'm seeing some type of comparison. Which are going to watch? DC? Go for it. Because what they got? They got Wonder Woman 84. They got The Joker 2. Ain't got nothing to do with DC. They got Suicide Squad was good. Peacemaker was good. And then what what else you got? You got animated movies, which I like. But, I mean, there you go. So, you got Hellboy. Gotcha. So shut the fuck up and just relax. Um, one thing I did want to talk about before I go to the last one and I'll bounce. Um, I've seen a lot of people, a lot of women. Um, shout out to So Problematic because I'm talking about this specifically for you. Uh, you made the show. I've noticed a lot of women have talked about the power of their vaginas. Um, I hate to have this humbling talk with y'all today, but I wanted to bring women to the table because this is very funny topic to me and i feel like y'all have been slightly delusion um let me just start out by saying this women i love y'all to death i've made a great adult living out of studying y'all admiring y'all going about my ways appreciating everything about y'all from the magnificent ways that y'all eyes look the way that y'all lips look and shine and glisten, the way that they feel, the way that y'all skin radiates, the way that your bodies twist and curve, the way that they can be in any type of shape from small to big to have uh, dimple, dimples in your cheeks to way that you can have the small petite frame to where you can have bodies like Queen Latifah, Monique, to where you can have bodies like Melissa Ford to uh, Zoe Zaldan's to anybody i love women you know what i'm saying my um gabrielle union sanai lathan you know what i'm saying rihanna's anybody i love y'all like i said i love y'all to death i studied all the r&b type tactics to foreplay making love to everything i love y'all i've taken a class in this if i could uh make a book on how to make passionate intimacy with y'all i would but i'm not so but i need to stop and pump the brakes for y'all to let y'all know that y'all coochies are not like this indestructible kryptonite that like i was just gonna give y'all the keys to the detonating button that's gonna stop uh it's gonna shoot out all the secret missiles that we have for the country like i feel like when some of y'all say like this whole it's all warm gushy and wet I don't know if you've met this and I don't know if you've met this, but these two were the first type of love making I've ever met in my life. When I figured out I could use this and when I figured out when this one was hurting or whatever, I could switch it up to this. All right. That means my hands had came in this world with me and my hands are going to go without me. All right. So at the end of the day, if my phone ever go dry, if I ever single, whatever, if I ever go get ugly, if my teeth ever fall out, if my eyes ever lose the lightness in them, if my hairline ever go 
and bald dents go in my head. And if y'all ever decide that I no longer look like a plus size mixture of, if I no longer look like a plus size mixture of Morris Chestnut and Itchers Alba, and y'all no longer like hefty niggas, if hoochie season falls out and y'all want y'all niggas back baggy and y'all just do not want me, I will be okay. You know why? Because I have my hands. And I just need y'all to humble yourselves. I feel like y'all got this false realization that like pussy runs the world. Like y'all just act like that because y'all like can roll over or because y'all can deny somebody some coochie. Like it comes to even some of the decisions y'all make. Like if you think about Valentine's Day, like, oh man, I need you to give me a dinner or, or I'm sorry, y'all expect dinners and whatever, chocolates and gifts. And then the man come back and just get some sex. Or, you know, he come home from a hard day. I'm gonna give him some ass. Like, I, I just feel like some of the some of the talks where I hear, like, and y'all talk about like y'all vaginas. And then on top of that, the reverse is like y'all got like a gang of sex toys, or y'all talk about vibrators or what a man can't do. Like, I don't know. Or I take this. Let me take this back. Y'all all think that all y'all stuff is great. Like. I don't know if women know more men know about their whack dicks than any woman has ever heard about how bad their vaginas is. Take a real any woman listeners, be realistic to yourself. How many be realistic with yourself? I'm sorry. How many times have you ever heard from your being told to you or from yourself or from sorry from your home girl to say that a nigga said that their coochie was whack or bad? or dry it ain't that many times or their head was bad it don't happen why is that because a nigga will be happy to get in anything i put it like this you could wet up a bowl and put or a, put a rag or anything put enough lubrication in it put it right between your legs and tell a nigga and guide a nigga dick in it and i promise you he won't know the difference you and he'll say this shit is amazing he will stick it in anything you could probably sit there and tell him he won't care. I don't know if y'all watch American Dad. One point, uh, Snot was fucking a ball and thinking he was fucking Roger. He was not even having sex. Like, niggas don't care. They will, they're literally making sex dolls and they will go marry a doll. So, or they will have sex with somebody with no legs. Niggas will hit anything and say it's the best thing in their lives as long as they get some ass. I don't think that y'all should keep gauging stuff by what somebody because i don't even think niggas even know what good, good coochie is i just think good coochie is the coochie that they got is good good enough for them to not lose it because when they think about it their game is weak because if all their game is is them trying to buy you something or keep you from leaving them and i just think that like if y'all are more realistic to the fact that y'all can go and if more niggas would be more aware that they are cool the internet is free you can just jerk it or go buy yourself a sex toy then more women or you would just tell women if the sex was just as regular as they tell you the dick is mid or they ain't doing nothing they got to roll over as quick as you bust and they say it's small or whatever then we would have more real realistic expectations for each other people if we would just all pop the bubbles and the fantasies that we have for both sexes we will stop living in these fantasy worlds because like i said niggas have some damn endurance besides two minutes or just go to the internet or stop telling every girl that this head is amazing so they will stop sitting over there thinking that they walking around with poseidon's pussy over there giving you that wet wet knowing that is over here earth of kits graveyard scratchy shit just saying it just because you needed some ass because you ain't have no team roster and this is all you got it's either this or it's back to Pornhub which Pornhub is cool ain't nothing wrong with beating dick beating your meat and then going to sleep it's probably quicker you know you're gonna be good okay cool ladies stop acting like you got that knockout word on the street is don't really matter I'm gonna put myself to sleep the same way you put me to sleep I'm tired so stop acting like you're doing something different than me i'm sorry my last topic i wanted to talk about was uh i saw the bill burr special thought it was great um thought it was very funny i'm not having any complaints about that that's not my issue with it uh 
My issue with it is I find it really funny that Bill Burr gets to be a comedian and talk about the LGBTQ community and Dave Chappelle does not. I find that as a double standard, but I'm not really surprised. It shows again a lack of uh I'm sorry, it shows that we live in two different Americas for black and white comedians. I find it very strange that the first couple hours of Dave Chappelle's stand up, I hear nothing but or see nothing but takes about what Dave Chappelle said about the trans community. And what Bill Burr, he talked about not only the LGBTQ community, because that's what the trans community falls under, the LGBTQ community. He talked about gays. He talked about abortion. He talked about black people. And it wasn't the fact about it being offensive. He talked about it. He talked about it being jokes. And if you watch Dave's special, he was telling jokes. and But he was also being informed. He was also trying to bring awareness to it he doesn't have a problem with trans people but because people got offensive offended by what he's saying he's being targeted as transphobic and he also even said at the point he named his special because one of his transgender friends killed themselves defending him being attacked by transgender people or people that i'm sorry he she killed herself defending him because people attacked her for defending dave because they consider him transphobic so but that being said and i also asked somebody in the lgbtq community about what they felt about it and they said they felt like it was full of shit the hate that he gives because he don't feel like people are really listening to what they said what he's saying they're just finding reasons to hate and they're going off of a couple bur blurbs that he's saying me personally i feel that bill burr is white and i feel like because he's out here saying anything I think I didn't watch his special till like a week or two after it came out. And I find it really strange that he could call lesbians, you know what a lesbian is, and he could talk about gays and all this, and nobody's saying an uproar at all. And why is that? Why is Bill Burr get to go on and have this iconic special or whatever the ratings are going to be, and it gets a pass? And Dave Chappelle just had a special in Minneapolis, the same iconic special uh, theater that Prince was going to have for Purple Rain. And the theater made sure they sold it out within five minutes but then you want to cancel and send it to another venue because you hear the voices of the people of the transphobic community yet are you hearing the voices but you still make sure you got the profit off of it we'll see what they did with the money however they did it but are you listening to the product you know what i'm saying like even the guy said the jokes that dave Chappelle was saying were triggering okay how is what bill burr said not triggering to somebody else like what if somebody is a lesbian and they dress like whatever he was describing or anything he said why isn't the same thing attributed to him you know what i'm saying like he's making jokes about the lgbtq community you could say the same things and again i thought the special was great but you can say the same things because he's making jokes about the LGBTQ community. Why isn't the same backlash coming for Bill Burr? He made black jokes. Why isn't the same uh, backlash coming for Bill Burr? He made abortion jokes. Why isn't the same backlash coming for Bill Burr? Why does Bill Burr get to be a comedian and Dave Chappelle doesn't? I just find that bullshit. I find it that Dave Chappelle's still going out of his way to build community services. I'm sorry, uh, theaters um, at his uh, old school. I just can't remember the name that they had. He had to change the name because they were going to honor it for him, but they were going to do a protest. Netflix got people going to walk out. Did y'all walk out for Bill Burr? I ain't seen no lesbians walk out for that. I ain't seen nobody that was pro-life do all that shit for that. You know, like I didn't see any pro-life people say anything about um, or pro-choice people say anything about the special that worked at netflix he got to be a comedian dave getting tackled like the nigga life is at a as at a cross in and now because he said one joke they were still going up in it because he said i didn't know if that knife identified as a gun or a knife but y'all forget like motherfuckers is running up on stage attacking him you know what i'm saying like like what are we what are we gonna do with this you know like at a certain point y'all getting violent 
and I get it. You okay, cool. So cool. Now you're offended, and I get it. You know, I'm not somebody to tell somebody you can't get offended. But at a certain point, when you're getting abuse, when you're getting attacked by somebody, now it's crossing a whole different line. I'm not saying amp up the jokes, but at a certain point, you have to take accountability for somebody's mental state. He might have PTSD from this. Nobody sat there and said, you know what? Yeah, we could have protested, but the moment we did this, we crossed the line because, hey, we didn't reach out and say, we don't con condone this as an LGBTQ community. We just wild out. And when he sat there and said, hey, my friend did this because she stood up for me and I was trans. And, I, I, and I've talked to other people, like, you know, like I said, I think it's just a select few. And I've also noticed it's younger LGBTQ community. And I've, I've talked to, I've heard, like, I think it was Rich Eisen. He said he don't agree with it, but it's just a comedian. You don't have to agree with the jokes. Maybe them people then didn't agree with the, the jokes. But I've also seen white people, at black stand-up comedians, they may not agree with the white jokes, but they're letting them be comedians. So I just found that was really fucked up. And I found that was really funny, though, that, like I said, I haven't heard any outroar from Bill Burr's special. And he talked about a bunch of letters. So um, that's kind of like where I'm going to wrap it up right now today. I appreciate y'all for rocking with me. Glad to be back. I hope y'all like the haircut. Hope y'all like the whole chase. Legs out. Uh, shout out to everybody. Appreciate everybody listening out. Shout out so problematic for giving me a segment. Shout out to them guys. Shout out I'm saying some names today. Uh, Smash, Brocast. Uh, shout out to my dog Moore. Shout out to my guy Shelly. Uh, Avery, all them people. Shout out to Cool Out Corner, L Pork. Shout out to Danielle. Shout out to Linnell. Shout out to Lene, shout out to the Fletcher twin, shout out to my dog Adam. Um, shout out to Drew versus the world, shout out to my dog. <clears throat> I'm just saying, podcast, shout out to my dogs, Irv Weeks, shout out to all y'all ass. I can't think of it right now, so I don't want to be fucking up, but I'm gonna holler at y'all later. Peace. Back in this bitch, uh, know we full attack in this shit, uh, you know the full Mac came equipped, uh.